accepted the rain. <coughs> misuse is the term that is used now instead of abuse, which I think alcohol abuses more than us abusing alcohol. Thank you. The second group is the use that has powerful use, and finally, the group with alcohol dependence. When we use the term misuse, we consider any harm, whether it be physical, psychological, or social. A person who has a drink and drives is also misusing alcohol. Harmful use is determined by medical parameters and this is when the amount exceeds what is considered physically tolerable for a person and for males it is 21 units per week and females 14 units. Therefore, a person who drinks alcohol socially should limit himself or herself to these feelings. So it would be around seven bottles of beer per week per female and perhaps a little more for a male. Now when you take a rack or whiskey or brandy, the units are much higher and Although a bottle may hold 30 units, we do a measure may hold up to 2 units. So, a drink a day or 2 would be the most a person should be allowed. Now, dependency syndrome is the extreme form and this is a disease condition. Once dependent, the person has that potential and even if the person is abstinent, the potential to become dependent persists and it is based on these features tolerance is that where a person is increasing the amount of alcohol to receive the effect that the person had and if it's increasing that is one of the features of dependence. Simply speaking, a withdrawal state is another and those of us uh, or anyone who complains that they cannot sleep if they don't take alcohol, more or less is dependent on the subject, on the drink. So these factors if present and we say that if three factors are present, that person is considered dependent on alcohol. And that is alcohol dependency. And this is where we have the most difficulty when we treat patients. Patients who have this feature, who are now in a disease state because of the use of alcohol. We looked at the physical problems. The previous lecture it affects all the systems in terms of the mental issues. There is the intoxication phenomena, the withdrawal phenomena, chronic nutritional disorders and a few other disorders which I will briefly mention. Intoxication causes labyrinth of mood, poor impulse control and memory lacks. Alcohol withdrawal we know causes all these features going on to extreme situations. Here are the common in Sri Lanka, where you see illusions, hallucinations and people having withdrawal seizures and eventually delirium tremors, which is the life threatening condition. 10% mortality is seen and people need to be admitted and treated under expert care because it is life threatening. Now in terms of toxic or nutritional conditions, the three that we focus on are in case encephalopathy, Corsacox cycles, and alcohol dementia, which comes with prolonged use. Burning case is an acute syndrome. 
Many patients say usually when a person suddenly stops alcohol, you see that he is disoriented, has impairment of consciousness sometimes with ataxia. Impairment of consciousness in alcohol comes in many situations. Commonly in delirium, <coughs> secondly in burning case encephalopathy, and thirdly in also alcoholic encephalopathy. So, burning case is something that has to be considered in addition to alcoholic encephalopathy or hepatic encephalopathy, which is the dominant form that is seen. In the chronic syndrome, where there is permanent deficits, you see cause of psychosis, where there is irreversible memory impairment associated with what we typically call confabulation. There is past the patient various things. He may not remember what's happened. His short-term memory is particularly impaired. He may not remember what he's eaten that morning in the cafeteria, but he may tell you various other things by just making it up. We have other psychiatric disorders which emerge with prolonged use. Personality deterioration is something as doctors you may have seen often. People become very self-centered, neglect responsibilities and become very dishonest and deceitful eventually. Mood disorders, depression is common. Suicidal behavior is again common among alcoholics and is one of the risk factors for higher suicide. And you know that take suicide, eventual suicide is much higher in males. And alcohol is a significant contributor to serious suicidal behavior. And another factor that affects long term functioning and reduces self esteem is the impaired psychosocial functioning <coughs> with erectile dysfunction and so on, which often leads to morbid jealousy. Another situation we often encounter in a general practice setting. And finally, people develop alcoholic hallucinosis, which is hallucinations not just in withdrawal but persistently, even when a person is continuing to drink. And also sometimes after even the longer period of abstinence. This is due to permanent brain <coughs> insult that occurs by the prolonged use of the drug. Now how do we help? How can we help? help? We be of health. It's often thought of as a difficult problem. We try to advise a person, it's just like pouring water on a duck's back. They go back and wallow in the mud again, get into the water, and they become submerged. Now, what does the evidence tell us? One of the most effective interventions. In terms of alcohol use, or perhaps misuse and dependence, is brief intervention. It has been tried and tested. And it's all about a short, focused discussion on the negative effects for less than 50 minutes. And this has been shown to reduce consumption of alcohol by at least 24%. And also, it reduces the amount of drinks a person takes. And this is particularly carried out in general practice settings. And I think we need to keep this in mind when we work with people who misuse alcohol. What are the other interventions that seem more helpful? We sometimes think that a person with alcohol dependence needs Sort of longer interventions needs longer term input. But even a single confronted, confrontational interview appears to be as good as sometimes a longer 12 week program. I mean, Sri Lanka confrontation can be disinterpreted because I think sometimes some doctors take the approach of uh, being very harsh patient will say confrontation is not about being harsh on the person, 
highly supplement, 100 to 200 liters, at least for a period of two weeks to prevent the burning case in general. So these are some of the things that we need to consider. And even when patients come and tell us stop paracetamol, <coughs> stop paracetamol after persistent use, I have had a binge for the last two weeks, I am stopping it and I think I can get over without any medication. It is best to use a benzodiazepine for a short period because the alcohol works through GABA receptors and when you sort of take it off, there is excessive activation in the brain which fundamentally causes the seizures and so on. So if you don't use it, evidence shows that each time you come off alcohol without any help or any support, there is more damage to the brain. So people who, you know, drink, stop, drink, stop on their own accord, perhaps have more damage to the neurons than people who get help and come off once and for all. But even if they are stopping and starting, it's best to eat help them each time they want to stop with uh, perhaps a low dose of chlorine oxide for a very short period to gradually take them off the effects of alcohol. <coughs> now relapse prevention, what do we do? I mean group therapies have very good evidence. The alcoholic anonymous group services in large trials have been shown to be as effective as some of the drugs that are used for lack prevention and social skills groups as well as other networks including religious support groups no doubt have a significant role in preventing the relapse of a person with alcohol and family involvement and the person seeing the rewards of not drinking again is very important. Drug treatment is now available and there are a wide range of these drugs that are now available in the market. A compressor is available in Sri Lanka. Very expensive. You're going to give 660 milligrams three times a day. It will perhaps cost a person 10,000 rupees a month. Uh, Naltrexone, one tablet costs 50, um, around 250 rupees a tablet, I think. So again, perhaps around 7,500 a month. Uh, other alternatives that have been tried and found to be effective are the SSRIs and depressants like fluoxetine and fluoxamine because sometimes there is an element of depression as well in the alcoholic person having used alcohol for a long time it just mess up the mood and the mood elevator also helps perhaps prevent the person going back into the alcohol and now also some evidence for topiramate and that topiramate. Now, lifestyle crime or interviews is something that's widely used, but you need to be really careful about the risk of a lifestyle reaction. And also, wives come and ask for it to be given covertly. And that's a dangerous risk that we take. So, under the patient is aware of it. You run a huge risk of serious effects. A person can develop seizures and can have uh, some arrhythmias coming on and some people may even have myocardial infarction because of the blood pressure shooting up. And therefore, it's a very dangerous drug to use covertly. You need to get the concurrence of the person before introducing the interviews. Uh, that's recommended. So in summary, we need to combine both pharmacotherapy and psychosocial interventions and the court remain abstinent, abstinent at one year but others do reduce drinking case and amount of drinking with the intervention that is offered by doctors. And I must insist that simple interventions are as good as expensive approach and this is perhaps why we don't have many alcohol rehabilitation centers which are run by the formal sector because you realize that even if you go for long term rehabilitation unless the person is motivated it's going to be difficult. It does help in terms of maintaining the experience and motivating the person but brief interventions given regularly can be as effective as the intensive approach.
<laughs> so, addressing alcohol issues is a bit of as duty, and they are aligning in that will address this problem. Thank you very much, Shyam, for that sobering thought. And thank you very much for the media time. We have still a couple of minutes behind time, so I have to ask you to remain sober with me and you refrain from uh, announcing the last few questions. In parts of the time, we have to get to the next uh, segment. Uh, there will be a post presentation which is on, and uh, it will be the morning time to all the questions. And I ask Dr. Abhidullah to present a small presentation of the session to Dr. Chairman.